What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Kick Ash Podcast. Today, we are focusing on the Royal Rumble, which airs tonight on the Peacock Network. Or if you are one of the lucky people out there still in the world, you have the WWE Network. And if you do, I am super jealous. <laughs> um, but but speaking of that, I, shout out to to everyone who's listening around the world. I see we we have some listeners from Russia, the UK, Germany. Uh, so it's it's pretty cool to see how the the little show is kind of branching out and, and growing literally around the world. So very very thankful for all you guys and girls out there, uh, not just in the U.S. or Canada or anything like that, but literally around the world. So it's just really cool to see how how far the show is is beginning to to reach. So that's it was just a pretty cool a pretty cool moment and kind of made my week. So shout out to you guys out there and thank you for for listening. You know you there's literally hundreds of of wrestling podcasts out there thousands of, of regular podcasts out there so i appreciate you guys adding adding mine to your feed but like i said today we're just going to focus strictly on the royal rumble and wwe um like i said in previous shows it seems like the this podcast as a whole has been pretty aew centric and, and dominant um which it wasn't intended on being it was just whatever has got me most excited and what i think is like the the big thing going that week um i want to talk about it you know what I mean so and it just so happens that's primarily been AEW but I'm not gonna sit here and and just ignore the Royal Rumble in, in WrestleMania season right and I WWE is always gonna have a place in my heart and I will always as much as they do shitty and questionable things and Obviously, I don't agree with a, a lot of things that have been happening in the past few years and, you know, like, whatever. It's I think that's kind of a, a detriment and maybe a downfall to social media and, and the role that social media has played because we're privy to so much information now. Like, sometimes I, I wish we, we weren't so inside the business, you know what I mean? So I think that has a lot to do with it, but... I will always, I, I can't not watch WWE, right? I can't not get excited for the Rumble season, which of course leads to WrestleMania season. So that's what the what brings us here today. And I think, like I said with Matt, and I should say, I, sh- I shouldn't bury the lead. Um, I did a full preview show on the Royal Rumble with Matt at the, over there on the WWE podcast. So absolutely check that out. Um, I'm probably not going to go as in depth or as long <laughs> as I did there with Matt. Um, and of course it's, it's so much easier and interactive, obviously talking with another individual regarding wrestling. So we bounce ideas off each other and he always, at least with one match, he seems to <laughs> always give me to, to, to sway either my pick or at least be be questioning myself in, in the best way possible, right? So definitely check out the WWE podcast if you haven't for whatever reason or you have seemed to have missed it. But that is, I, I, that's one of my staples. That's one of the first things I listen to. Um, they just drop so many shows, right? And and I've been so lucky to have been on the on the shows with Matt and with Mimi, of course, for AEW Dynamite. But Matt was... Me and Matt have been doing shows off and on together for, I think, a couple years now, which is crazy to think, but so much love and appreciation for him, so shout out to them as well, but like I said, with him, um, last night we did a a pretty extensive rundown of the Rumble itself, so if you want to hear me and him and and the dynamic with that, definitely check out the show over there, Um, but today, like I said, I, I wanted to make sure I had one on the feed here for you guys as well, so we'll get right into it here. First up here, we have Edge and Beth Phoenix versus The Miz and Maurice. I'm pretty certain the this little rivalry is going to end here. Um, I'm not really sure what else you could really do between the the two duos to prolong it, you know? Like, originally, when I thought that we could get Edge and Beth versus Miz and Maurice, I thought that they may try to push off from even starting the feud, maybe just plant some seeds and then return back to it, maybe starting at the Rumble to then lead into WrestleMania. Um, Just, I don't know, I I kind of felt like you could maybe go like the Miz and Maurice and John Cena and Nikki Bella route from a few years ago, which seems like a lifetime ago now, but I think with all the, the story and obviously the previous matches that we've already had leading into the tag match for at the Rumble, I think you gotta end it here, unless... 
I, cause, and I mean, I guess you, you could go the route. So <laughs> I guess spoil, spoiler alert. My, my prediction and get that out of the way is Edge and Beth Phoenix winning here. Um, but I don't, I guess you could go the route with maybe Murray's getting the upper hand on Beth somehow, maybe like a quick roll up or, which I hate. <laughs> I'm just going to say, but we're talking WWE here. Um, either that or hitting her with something pretty much maybe going like the 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 brick route again right with the brick in the purse thing which by the way i fucking loved i just the the thought of maurice like having a brick in her purse like that in, in plant it, it was just perfect and then the the look of the brick itself beautiful so so well done and and that's why i i said with matt i before i, I move on to the match itself i Love the Miz and Maurice together as as a act and as an on screen couple, right? Because I'm um, of course, obviously they're married in real life, but I think just the chemistry that they have together is just so so natural, and it's so easy to hate them as an act. And I think it really enhances the Miz. I think I think even more so than like a John Morrison or another tag partner. I think the Miz. With Maurice at his side, it's just on a different level. And there's just something about having Maurice there that just makes him more of a star. I think, obviously, the, the Miz has a presence about him that he, he, whether you like him or you don't, he's a big deal. And you're going to pay attention regardless of if you really want to or not, because it's the Miz, you know? I'm not going to say he's like, even though he says it, um, that he's must-see TV, but... In a way, he kind of is, you know, like, it's it's always engaging. Whatever he says, he's so good on the mic. He just has a way of, of just kind of bringing you in. And I think having Mar- Maurice there is just such, like, an, an added bonus. And I'm happy there are a couple, right? Like, I, I'm so happy that everything worked out the way it did because we as fans get to have them as an act on, on, on screen. So regardless of whether this is the ending of the feud or if they are going to try to drag it out. Um, I, I just, I do hope that the Miz and Maurice kind of stay together as an on-screen act. Um, but I, I'm, I'm excited for this match. You know, I'm, I'm excited to see how it plays out to see how they have Beth finally get her hands on Maurice. And, and if, cause in my opinion, I, I think that Beth is probably going to dominate the match. I think she's going to maybe try to get the most, or maybe get the most offense in. And I think she, Matt had mentioned, I'm not going to steal, steal his idea, but he had mentioned that he thinks that she's going to get the pin on, um, Miz or something like that. Um, which I could totally see, or I could see her maybe actually getting the pin on Maurice, which is, I believe the route that I went. So I, that's the way I see this, this match ending. I think it's going to be Beth getting the, the pinfall over Maurice and then just kind of calling it a day there. But I think it, it's, and of course, saying all that about Ms. and Maurice, it's going to be so cool and uh, just like a, a a good moment, right? A good feel-good moment with Edge and Beth coming out there as a obviously another married couple. But this is the first thing that they've ever done together on, on screen, right? This, this storyline as a, a couple and everything. So it's just going to be cool just knowing like kind of like the backstory and everything and, and just seeing how far we've come in the past few years because if we look back two three years from now this it, seeing this match as even or thinking of this match as a possibility and then seeing it as a reality it wouldn't even it, people would have thought you're crazy right seeing edge return and just be on the run that he's been on the past couple years now it, it's it's amazing to see so Long story short, <laughs> I guess after I say all that, uh, I'm my of course my again my official pick is Edge and Beth getting the victory here. Um, but I will be curious to see what what Beth does going forward after this. If she kind of hangs around and she inserts herself back in the women's division, or if maybe she even shows up if she's a surprise entrant in the Rumble later on tonight. You know, because I kind of I for whatever reason have a feeling this match is well. If if this match itself doesn't open, maybe. I don't know, maybe the, the men's Rumble match may open, depending on what surprises we get there or or what, but I have a feeling this match may open and then the following match may be the Rumble. Um, so I think that could be cool, right? Depending on, like I said, how, how long Beth was planning on staying around and if, I guess, she feels good in, in this match tonight, maybe it's a possibility that she's a surprise entrant in the Rumble. You know, I'm not saying that she would she would win necessarily, but I think she can maybe be a surprise and then maybe set up a potential feud going into mania with someone. So that's just another possibility. Or it could, she could just literally be back for this one match with her husband and then go back home and, and call it a day or go back to NXT. 
um, or just kind of hang out until whatever else may, may arise in the future. But looking forward to this match nonetheless. Next on the list, we have the Raw Women's Championship, which, of course, going in is your champion Becky Lynch versus Dewdrop. I I just, I hate that name, guys. <clears throat> I know it's it's like beating a dead horse at this point, but I just, I, she's Pipe Niven. Like, I just, I, and part of me was thinking, you know, when she snaps it and breaks out one day, she's going to reveal, like, that's going to be it. Like, someone's going to call her Dewdrop and she's just going to snap and, and be like, no, my name is Piper Niven. And, and that was going to be, like, her breakout moment and then to go on, like, a, the, or just like a rampage run. Um, but obviously I was wrong on that, so <laughs> here we are, but obviously this, this match is probably the most, one of, like, the most certain of the matches that I, I am pick-wise going in, um, which, no disrespect to Dewdrop, and, and I say all that because I'm a huge Piper Niven fan, right, like, I, she's, I'm not gonna say, like, I, I know everything about her career, but everything that I've seen, she's just, she, <laughs> I hate to, to sound like that person, but she has it, right? Like, she's amazing. Like, she's so, she's solid in the ring for, and I, I hate to, to even say, like, for her size, because, like, I, you know, like, it's just one of those weird and, and, and like, weird topics. But, like, in a way, like, she's, yeah, like, for, for someone that size to be so agile and to be so good at what she does, like, and it's just, it's amazing to see, right? And I think that she... After this, what I kind of went over with Matt, that I think that this, uh, let me back up a second. Becky Lynch is going to retain. It, there's just no question about it. But I think after this, Piper can kind of, Piper, I'm, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to say Piper, guys. I'm just going to say Piper, do drop whatever comes out. But you guys know what I mean. Um, but I think she's going to go on a run there. I think she should kind of go through just the dominant streak and just kind of, just kind of crush her opponents, have, like, maybe 30-second minute matches and just demolish them in, what, squash matches, right? Um, just on a run, and, and I don't even necessarily mean through starting with the rest of the women on the roster. Just whenever you go to your local town, like, have the have WWE call, like, an independent wrestler or something like that and, and have bring them in and just have Piper just run right through them. And I, I, I just think that's, I just think she could really benefit from that you know like I just I view her as someone who could really be a dominant force in the division if, if built up right and I think that it's got it's obvious you know say what you want about the team back there but I think it's it's obvious that they see something in her and she's in this match for a reason right like they could have chose anyone else or they could have gone back to Liv Morgan but they went with Dewdrop here so I think it's gonna be a good match and I think that, think this may be her best match since being on Raw, just with it being against Becky, I, I could just see it playing out that way. Um, and I hope so, for that matter. I hope, and as much as I think it, everyone knows that she's going to lose going into it, I think this is going to be a star-making moment for her. And I think they should give them at least 10, 11 minutes um, to, to get a, a nice, solid match. So my official pick here is Becky. I don't see any interference or anything like that. Um, I, I think it's just going to be a, a solid back-and-forth match. Uh, for the most part, but then of course Becky's going to retain. I I think it would be beyond foolish to to end Becky's reign here for any reason. Um, you gotta have her go into at least WrestleMania with her with the championship, no breaks, no nothing. Uh, it would it would just be beyond stupid <laughs> at this point. Um, so and of course we'll we'll get into that a little bit more when we get to the women's Royal Rumble match itself, but. Next up on the list here, we have the Universal Championship match. We have Seth Rollins facing the Universal Champion, Roman Reigns. Um, and kind of the same feeling with Reigns here at, um, in respect to Becky Lynch. It's as much as I would love to speculate more on, on the possibility of Rollins winning. It's just not the time, first of all, which is why I hate that we're even, ha to be honest, like I, I hate that we're even having this match right now to begin with. You know, I feel like this should have been a WrestleMania match. Um, maybe not even this year or maybe a SummerSlam match or just something that would have. So I say that Roy Rumble is obviously one of the big four pay-per-views, right? But I feel like it goes... And you can even make a an argument for the fourth now, which is sad, but obviously Mania, SummerSlam, Rumble, and then Survivor Series, but a lot of people 
throwing money in the bank now. Um, I don't know. Survivor Series is still up there for me. But I think that with Rollins kind of being like a plan B, obviously, because of what happened with day one and them needing like a, a different story to, to go into the Rumble. First of all, I don't think you even needed a Reigns match on the Rumble to begin with. I think you could have stuck with just having, if you, if you felt like you had to have a heavyweight championship match, which I agree you do, you could have left it at Lashley and Lesnar and just had Reigns bragging that he took the night off and or just whatever, you know? Like, I, I feel like you could have even held off completely which obviously would have saved this match. So I say all that, but I know this is probably going to be the match of the night in ring wise, like in, in singles match wise. Um, I, I just with Rollins and that's kind of what's frustrating that they're doing it now. And in my opinion is Rollins in ring, he can sell you in any match. Like you can go regardless of the story going into it. There's always moments in the match where you think Rollins can win. And, and I think that's such a, a credit in testament to him um but that's just another reason why i wish it wasn't happening now but all that to the side we are getting it now so i think the fact that they did play into their story and they obviously touched on the shield history ron's mentioned mox by name which is interesting um i think that we're gonna get a, a, a clean victory here for reigns I don't think that we're going to get any type of interference or anything like that for, for this match. I think it's just going to be pretty straightforward. Pretty certain it's going to be like 18, 20 minute match. Um, but, you know, when I say that, like, they may try to protect Rollins here. And if they do, like, I, I wouldn't be shocked, obviously. And I, to be honest, I don't, depending on how they do it, I don't think I would necessarily hate it. And that could save the potential to come back to this match in the future when they need it. Um, But my thing is, I just wish they would have focused more on it. Like, I just, that's why I was kind of bummed when they announced it for the Rumble. Because I feel like this story with so much meat and and history that there is with it, I think that they could have easily got a six-month feud out of it, at least. You know what I mean? So, just story alone, and then you could have inserted Heyman back. It's just, there's just so many things that they I feel like they could have gotten out of it, and maybe they will. Maybe that's the plan, just to kind of, maybe this was just like a quick go-to for now, and then they'll revisit it in the future. But I think, obviously, it's it's got to be obvious that Reigns retains here. Um, again, just like I said with Becky, it would be stupid to take the title off of Reigns for any reason before going into Mania. Um, there's just, there's just literally no need for it. Um, no, no diss on Rollins, but it's just not his time. It, it's not the, it's just not the right version of his character. I think. Um, I don't know. It, it just doesn't feel right right now. At least on the, against Reigns, maybe it, you can make a, a different story on Raw, which I very well may. <laughs> um, but at least in respect to SmackDown's world and Reigns being the champion, I don't, I don't think it's time for Rollins to beat Reigns. Next on the list, we have the WWE Championship match. Bobby Lashley facing off against the WWE Champion Brock Lesnar. This one is, I think if we're going to get interference in the night, this one may be it, but to be honest, I I feel like we're going to get another clean victory here. And maybe I'm giving WWE too much credit um, for all the possibilities of of clean finishes uh, on on the card here. But I just feel like, especially with, now let me, again, backtrack. I hated the promo with Brock and Lashley on Raw, where Lashley, or where, excuse me, Lesnar was pretty much just like berating Lashley, right? And saying that he pretty much had never heard of him, how he's a Brock Lesnar wannabe and all that shit. Like, it, it's just, this matchup in this feud literally wrote itself like you just you the story is it's two titans two two massive human beings two pretty much equals like you look at them and their frame the height like it's it's pretty much dead on right and their similar history going into the mma world and everything and then coming back to wwe it's just there's so many parallels and and so many so much history that they could have pulled off of in that respect and just comparing them as as equals but the fact that they went the route with Lesnar saying that he doesn't know who Lashley is. And like I said with Matt, I, I, part of me gets it. And I, it's not that it's, it's even that unbelievable, right? Um, and again, I'm not going to sit here and even 
say that Lesnar probably knows like a full rundown of Lashley's history, but I'm pretty certain that he knows who or he knows and knew who Bobby Lashley was prior to that Monday night on Raw, um, or even day one that on the pay per view that that weekend prior. So the fact that he went that route, I just I I didn't like it. It was disrespectful. I just I I didn't I just didn't like it. I feel like it was just too demeaning for Bobby, and it just didn't need to happen that way. Um, but all that out of the way, and in my little <laughs> my little uh, rant out of out of this out of sight here, I don't think that you do all that to Lashley and then have him lose. And maybe I could be wrong here, but and maybe I'm taking it more personally and and more emotionally than than I should. But I don't think that you you say all that shit about Lashley and then have him lose. So I and I had asked Matt if if he thought that they may go the the Goldberg route with in respects to a Lesnar match with having Goldberg just demolish Lesnar in short short time. But and I I don't think they they're, they're going to go that route. But I'm not gonna lie, I did speculate on it myself. Um, but I think probably what they'll do here is is I think you got to at least have it. A, a, eight to ten minute match with, with these two guys I don't really see it being much longer than that I I see maybe max of, of 12 but I definitely don't see anything longer just with the the a number of matches and the rumble matches themselves take an hour so I think you just for time purposes you know you got to keep it pretty limited but I think Lashley wins here I think and again I, I don't know if it's going to be a matter of Reigns or not necessarily Reigns himself but having some type of involvement maybe sending the Usos out or Paul Heyman screwing Lesnar or anything like that but I th- I think it being a clean it's going to be a clean victory here for for Lashley I think that this is his moment this is where he gets the title back and I think that's gonna pretty much set him up to be the champion going into Wrestlemania so we'll see but I, I my money here is on Lashley Next on the list, we have the women's rumble match, and I think this is probably the more intriguing rumble match of the two, just with the possibilities, of, and especially this week of of surprise returns. Just gonna start with that here. Uh, of course, Rousey is the number one surprise that everyone is is pretty much expecting at this point. But like I said to Matt, I don't know why, and maybe I'm just completely foolish and I'm under some weird rock or or whatever. But I don't. I don't feel like Rousey's returning. You know, maybe, maybe it's, I, maybe I should, <laughs> especially with Becky Lynch retweeting whatever, w, whatever account it was. It was some, I think it was like maybe BR Wrestling or, I don't, it was one of them who had mentioned the possibility of, of Rousey making a, a return at the Rumble. And Becky had mentioned that she, you know, had something like she, she still has the title and she looks really good or something to that effect. So maybe, Maybe that is a sign that I should be taking more seriously. Um, and you know, and as much, I I don't know why I'm in such denial with this, but maybe she does make a return, and and maybe she, I I just don't see her winning though. But then I then again, like, why would you bring Ronda Rousey back in the Rumble match itself, and then not have her win? So, and I think that 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 may actually be why, as I sit here and talk it out. <laughs> Uh, I why I I just don't want her to return tonight at the Rumble because I I wanted to be focused on someone else and I I don't necessarily want it to be Ronda's night I I don't know but then again it's it, I'm I'm torn obviously I I I think with obviously the the caliber of a Ronda Rousey you don't want to maybe bring her back on a, a random episode of Raw. And if you're going to have a surprise, have it be at a big event like the Rumble, especially with the venue they'll be in, with the amount of people there being around 40,000. Um, I th- Obviously, you, you do want a big moment, right? And the Rumble is is what moments are about. Like, that. that is the Rumble in itself, is is making those moments. So I, I get it. But I think it, I think part of me is, is more biased and, and wants it to kind of go in someone else's direction, which I'll, I'll get here in a minute. But get to it in a minute but um I could see it I could totally see Ronda making her return here winning the rumble match using it to obviously challenge Becky at Wrestlemania they finally get their one-on-one title match 
Um, it, I would say it's a little reversed here because we had Ronda going in as the champion at Mania 35, but this time we'll have Becky, um, which could be fun seeing Ronda in, in chase mode and to see if she has any matches leading up to WrestleMania or if they hold off on having it that her her return match, which is, it'd be kind of, it, I don't know the right word, but it'd be kind of interesting to see if that is how everything plays out because that's pretty much how her debut was. She made her debut at the Rumble. And then her first match was at Mania. So, um, or maybe, um, yeah, because it was with Kurt Angle versus Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. So, to have her return at the Rumble and then make her return singles match debut at WrestleMania would be kind of poetic and in a weird way, um, if I have everything correct there. But, again, and look, and if that's what happens, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm going to hate it. Like, I'm a huge Ronda Rousey fan. Have been since before she even started in WWE. I've big fan of hers in UFC. I didn't I I wasn't one of those people who like started shitting on her once she lost and and a lot of people said she took her ball and went home type thing. Um I get it, you know, like she she built the women's division in UFC and she really put it on the map, you know what I mean? And I don't know like we all respond differently to losses, right? And I can't imagine being on a dominant streak and then things kind of ending up the way they did like mentally and emotionally like that that's going to take a toll on you right so I think and especially when you put your your whole life and your your body and your soul into what you do it's it's got to be crushing you know and I, I think we all react differently um but that that's a whole nother topic but again that's what I'm I say all that to say like I, I wouldn't be shocked if that's how it played out but I think my bias and and my want here for for a different direction and a different wrestler to to get their shine here is is maybe clouding that judgment um so i guess i won't be surprised and i if ronda does debut but i say all that again but if we we do have what they just announced on smackdown the return of sasha banks she's going to be inserted into the rumble as well so that was a pretty big development so I actually, when Matt and I were recording the show, he it was kind of like a little bit of breaking news. <laughs> we were recording during SmackDown, um, but him and I weren't watching it as the show was going on. But he had saw that when we were looking something else up, that Sasha made her return and then announced for the Rumble. So with him, I ended up, I, I said if she may end up being uh, a, a tie for my pick, which I kind of cheated there. Um, but my to kind of get to my official pick here, for the women's rumble match, I'm going Bailey. <clears throat> I could be completely off, completely off time wise, at least, and she may not even be set to return. But I'm I just have this this strong feeling that Bailey's gonna make a surprise debut or debut a surprise return at the rumble match and then win. I I just feel like that's the route that they're gonna go. The whole Sasha thing really really throws a curveball in that. In, in my little idea, because the way I envisioned it was, you have Bailey make her return here, which sets up a, a Mania match for her and Charlotte, going into obviously this year's WrestleMania. But now with Sasha being back, I don't know how that changes things, or if, I don't know if Sasha gets inserted into those plans, or if you just have Sasha win the Rumble match in itself and then just go Sasha and Charlotte at Mania. <laughs> kind of hard to say say that five times right but um or you could do a triple threat you could do a triple threat with flair versus banks versus bailey at mania which i think would be a phenomenal match um but i i still think if bailey is back and ready and the plan was to bring her back at the rumble i think because of course you you like bailey as a heel was was so so well done and i think she may have eclipsed her her babyface run on the main roster with her heel run because she was just that damn good at it. So I know you'll probably want to get back to that at some point, but you can't deny. It's almost going to, I'm not going to say maybe at a Becky level, or in, very well maybe, but I think when Bailey returns, people are going to be so excited she's back and just so happy to see her. You're going to have to cheer her. So take advantage of that while you can, and then later on you can turn it back if you need to, but... I feel like if she's going to return at the Rumble, you got to give her the victory and have her go to WrestleMania with Charlotte. And then you can very easily insert Banks there and do what you want with that. But I think for storyline purposes and kind of comparing the two shows, in this situation, SmackDown's roster needs the Rumble win for the, the women's side. 
Um, and not really going to spend too much time here getting into the, all the possibilities um, outside of that with your legends and, and of course, being Summer Rae. <laughs> um, but you have your leaders coming back. Of course, your Impact Knockouts champion, Mickey James. Um, I, I do hope that they allow her to wear the title to the ring and, and come out to her hardcore country music as she had stated in a, a interview somewhere that she wants to do and plans on doing. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But I think this Rumble match is, is going to be the most intriguing, in my opinion, to see how it plays out. But my my money is on Bailey. I Again, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Rousey does return, if, if it goes to her, or if it even goes to Banks. But my money is on Bailey for for this one, and again, could be completely wrong, but I'm 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 hopeful for Bailey if nothing else. But the last matchup that we have here is of course the men's Royal Rumble match. This one is I I don't even know where to go with this one. This one was the most difficult for me to to decide on, and looking back on my pick, I'm it's one of those things where it's maybe like the the women's rumble match it, i'm more hopeful and maybe my 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 bias is is clouding my judgment but i'm just going to get my pick out of the way here and then kind of delve into a, a few more options but my my pick here is biggie and i say that because i have lashley winning the title against lesnar obviously going into wrestlemania as champion but i think you you want a challenger like a Big E going into WrestleMania, right? And I obviously know that he was just a champion, and whether you put the title on him at Mania is a whole other topic, which I'm not going to get into now, but I think you can have almost like a Kofi build and a Kofi hype with Big E right now. And I think the fact that he was just recently champion, how he lost in the Fatal Five way, not a one-on-one match. And again, he did have some matches after that that he did lose, you know, one against Seth Rollins, that one-on-one match. But, and again, that's why I'm saying I, I, I could be off here, but I feel like if you really wanted to focus and have a strong babyface story and to really test Big E too, right? And to test the how much you can get out of his character and which I, it, for the record, I feel like you can get a lot if you really put the machine behind him and, and really focus on him. I feel like you, he can be your star, right? And I feel like he, I feel like he was, at the beginning, He you, you saw that and especially with all the media he was doing, all the appearances, he really embraced being the champion. And I feel like if you really put more build and more shine behind him, especially going into WrestleMania with it being that season, I feel like he, you can really make him even a bigger star. And whether, like I said, you put the title on him at, at Mania at that point is is a whole other topic. And th- that'll be the result of, of the build in a way too, right? Um, but for whatever reason, and again, I could be way off here, but I, I, I my pick was Big E. Um, now, there are a whole bunch of other possibilities, but I don't... A lot of people are thinking maybe Lesnar's going to re-enter the Rumble, and then he's going to win to challenge Reigns. Um, and I think that was actually Matt's Matt's decision in, in his pick, too. But to me, I don't think you need that. I don't think you need a Rumble victory to have to for, as a reason for Lesnar to get a match against Reigns. I think... First of all, it's it's Brock Lesnar, you know, like he he kind of does what he wants, and if he you can, there's just so many ways he can even just declare that he wants a, a match against Reigns, and and that's what I think that's probably going to happen. They're going to play up the fact that he never got his one on one match against Reigns at day one because of Reigns, you know, unfortunately missing the event, um, and uh, even though he did end up getting. A championship match and end up being the champion, you know, he still was entitled to his one on one match. So I feel like that's the direction that you can go, kind of like the Seth Rollins route, you know what I mean? So I feel like that story is already built in there, so you don't have to use a, a Rumble victory on that, even though I could very, very well see it. And I think it would kind of be cool to see Lesnar uh, win a Rumble match, but I don't see it. I, I, I don't feel that for whatever reason. Um, I feel like. Just like SmackDown's women's division needed the women's Rumble victory to kind of help stimulate that storyline, I feel the same way for Raw's men's division and and their championship match. I feel like Raw needs the Rumble match winner to kind of have a built-in storyline right there and then kind of just go off of um, each week. So 
regardless if it's Biggie or not, I feel like whoever wins the men's Rumble match is going to face the Raw champion, which, my again, my money is on Lashley. So, that's why I think you, you kind of go the Big E route. Like, I that's just, in my mind, I, I can just see the posters. I just, I just, I envision it for whatever reason. Um, I do think there's a, for as, as, with dark horses and things like that, like, I don't, I'm just going to say right off the bat, like, I don't see anyone from AEW coming in. There was... I say that, right? And then, I, as I told Matt, I, the only, like, 0.01% chance, maybe 2% chance, that I could see anyone from AEW even making a, any type of, of entrance in the Rumble would be a, a Chris Jericho. And I don't I don't even think it would be, like, a John Moxley or a Cody Rhodes or anything like that. I, I think it would only be Jericho just because of who Jericho is. And the fact that he did that, the Stone Cold podcast, I think that's, you know, it, it's not like this huge thing, but again, it's it's something that no other wrestler has ever done. And it's kind of unheard of when, you, when you're when you thinking WWE, right? Like he was a contracted wrestler for another promotion who they, who has weekly television and was going up against a WWE product. So it was fascinating to kind of see and in retrospect still kind of fascinating um so that's why I say if there is any possibility of an AEW wrestler showing up in the rumble my money would be on Jericho but I I don't see that happening I don't think Tony Khan wants the perception out there at all to be that they have any type of involvement together um I just I don't see it and I don't I don't see the real need. I don't I think it would be more beneficial for WWE than it would for AEW and I don't see what that would really do to benefit AEW in the long run. Like yeah, it would be cool, but I just I I don't see it benefiting AEW as much as it would WWE and for that reason I don't see Tony Khan doing it and rightfully so. There's no reason he needs to. Uh I I just wouldn't have anything to do with it. Even whether that was ever a possibility or or not, I just if I was Tony Khan, I would just kind of stay away from from that at least right now. Like I I just don't think it's worth it unless they were going to get something massive in return that's guaranteed. I I I don't see it. So Jericho and AEW are kind of ruled out for me. Anyone from NXT, um, Walter, I'm not calling him whatever, Gunther, whatever. It's just, no. He's always Walter. He will forever be Walter. <laughs> um, kind of like Dewdrop. But I could possibly see Walter showing up. It wouldn't, I I would be more, my, if I had to pick anyone from NXT I, or for that, yeah, NXT or NXT UK, I, I would choose Walter. But I, part, I say that, but then part of me, doesn't know why you would debut him on NXT if you're just going to have him in the Rumble. Um, unless it's just like a one-time thing. Unless it's just like a, literally just like a, a surprise type thing. He comes in, does what he's going to do, gets eliminated, and then goes right back to NXT. Um, which is, is pretty possible. But I I think that if you're going to want to debut Walter in the Royal Rumble, you're going to want to keep him on the main roster. So I can, I could see that, you know, because he did have that pretty defining match against Roddy last last week was it two weeks ago Roderick Strong um and maybe maybe the point of that match was just to declare to declare his name change right and so when he debuts in the Rumble it's not the intention isn't that he's a completely different wrestler it's just he ha- he's the same dude just a different name maybe that's the route that they were going in the mindset and if that's the case then whatever fine but I still don't like the name <laughs> um but yeah I-, I could very well see him being a surprise here um like I said but if the plan is to keep him on the main roster if not then I, I don't see him doing any type of one night thing and if so then that's just kind of weird to me just kind of like a waste like I don't see why you get everyone excited and then just not leave him on the main roster which I know they've done in that past but it's just kind of a waste to me uh Braun Breaker came up and again I don't I don't I don't know you wouldn't I think it's the same thing with Walter like I don't think especially with him being the NXT champion I don't think you want to have him in the in the Rumble match and then have him be eliminated I just I feel like with especially with the promise that Breaker is showing and the hype and, and obviously they they have huge hopes for him in the future. I don't know why you would want to waste that moment when you obviously aren't going to keep him on the main roster either. You know, especially with him being the champion, there's there's no way. Um, so yeah, I, I, I as much as it would be cool to see 
and to see the reaction that he could potentially get, whether people would know who he is or just kind of not react at all or, or what have you. But I just, me personally, I don't think you, you pull the trigger on that yet. I don't, maybe next year's Royal Rumble, once he has another year on NXT and he kind of has his dominant run as the champion and then you're, you're ready for him next year, then, then yeah, but I don't, I don't think it's time for him yet. But any other, like for, and I hate to say it, but the forbidden door route that, that, people are referring to um the the dark horse that I put my money on would be a Zack Ryder Matt Cardona appearance I think for in in this situation would just be a one-time thing like I don't think and it's completely different because he's not a contracted wrestler right I think he would be perfect for the character and the kind of direction that he's been going on the independent route like saying that WWE has been his developmental or was his developmental um and just like, for instance, like when he goes to GCW and how he, he plays up and hams up the, the sports entertainment route. I think he could get so much heat and just have so much material for making a one-time appearance in the Rumble. I think WWE would be kind of blind to that fact and they would just be kind of uh, happy to fill a spot in a way. You know what I mean? And I'm sure they're not blind to the success that he's had on the side. But I think it could be a win-win for both, especially more so. I think this would actually benefit Matt Cardona more than it would, obviously, WWE if, if they called him in for this. And I and that's why I want it to happen. I want him to get the match. I don't care how long he's in there or what have you. I mean, obviously, more than 30 seconds. But not saying he has to have like this, this massive like run during the match or anything. But I think it would be so cool to see him come back, go back on the independent scenes like tomorrow, and then just... Like, just talk shit and just ham it up with it right um so I could totally see that happening or he could give them a big F you and then and just say no nah, I'm good like the Iconics did they they apparently declined their invitation to, to come back to the Rumble match and and good for them you know they go by the inspiration now and, and impact and they're the tag team champions over there so good for them if they didn't feel like it was the right time or they just have no interest in going back kudos to them for for standing their ground and and saying no because I'm sure it would have been a decent payday regardless and for just one night of work um and you know it could have maybe been cool to have the world's champion and then the women's tag team champions uh in the same rumble match for a different company but shout out to them and and kudos to them for for standing their ground you know but and, and I say that to say Matt Cardona could say the very same thing um but I think Matt Cardona may be a little more inclined just because of how much like I said just shit he could get for it and he would just eat that up and that would be literally the whole point so if there was gonna be someone from the outside that would be making a return I could see it maybe being like a Zack Ryder and playing up to his music and the that radio bullshit music that he had but that's the route that I could see going but overall I think it's gonna be a pretty exciting rumble um and it's weird like this it's so weird how the weekly shows cannot really be that exciting but once it's it's rumble season everything kind of completely changes um, so yeah, I think that that's kind of how we're going to start off the, and I, I love that it's on a Saturday night too. Um, so if we can get more Saturday pay-per-views, that would be great. <laughs> um, but I think it's going to be pretty fun and it'll be interesting to see how everything plays out. But let me know what you guys think, um, um my picks and if I end up being completely off on them, uh, just let me know. And of course, tune in to the Rumble match tonight and I may be tweeting during the show tonight if I get back in time so like I said feel free to follow me on twitter at a-s-h-m-a-n-n-s and the show's podcast is at kickash podcast underscore have an awesome weekend guys take care